if you want a heart that's after God's own heart, what kind of elements does that incorporate? A submissive heart. The story of David is important both individually and corporately as his influence can be felt in both levels. We're going to start in uh, 1 Samuel 16. So open your Bibles to 1 Samuel chapter 16 when David is anointed king of Israel. Now it's interesting because he's anointed king of Israel while Saul is still the king. It's interesting. Saul is the king of Israel, and then David is anointed the king of Israel while Saul is still holding that position. So we got we to gotta use our hermeneutics and our exegesis. We want to know, we can't just jump into 16 and say, well, David's the king now. What does that mean? Why? Why is David king? There's already a king. Why do we need another king? Where's the king going? Is he going on vacation? Is this, you know, is he this, on a sabbatical? What is going on? Why is this happening? So turn one page over to chapter 15. And we're going to get a little context. Let me tell you something about Saul before we get into this. Saul was a son of Kish, a well-to-do member of the tribe of Benjamin. When Saul was selected as king, he was so embarrassed and so shy that they searched for him and they couldn't find him. They eventually found him like hiding in the baggage from all the caravans that came to this this, uh, uh, summons to choose the next king. He was hiding in the baggage. We'll talk a little bit about this later. The scriptures say he was tall, very tall. Handsome, he was a tall, handsome young man. Scripture describes him as a head and shoulders taller than all the other men. This will come into play when we get to the whole Goliath story down the road. Okay? He was tall, he was what a king should look like, but he also had terrible self-confidence. Terrible self-confidence. He pandered to his army generals like crazy. At multiple occasions, disobeying God's instruction to appease the army. He had some great successes, but his story ultimately ends in abject failure. Why? Because his heart was not right. We see a fall, a terrible fall from uh, from grace when it comes to uh, Saul. He's chosen by God at the beginning. And by the end of his reign, he's consorting with witches to find out what to do. That's a... Okay. So, let's read out of um, 1 Samuel chapter 15. And we're going to start in verse 10 and go through 28. It says this. And this is the moment in which Saul uh, puts the last nail in the coffin, so to speak, of his reign. He's had some mess-ups already. He's he's already struggling to maintain his army. And he has done some things that go directly against what God asked him to do in order to appease the people. So verse 10 starts with this. Then the word of the Lord came to Samuel and and said, I regret that I made Saul king. For he has turned away from following me and has not carried out my instructions. So Samuel became angry and cried out to the Lord all night. Samuel got angry with God. Early in the morning, Samuel got up to confront Saul. But it was reported to Samuel, Saul went to Carmel where he set up a monument for himself. See how where this is going. Then he turned around and went down to Gilgal. When Samuel came to him, Saul said, May the Lord bless you. I have carried out the Lord's instructions. I don't, I haven't read in the instructions where the king is supposed to set up a monument for himself, but that must have been not on his mind at this moment when Samuel is definitely coming with his finger like this. Samuel replied, Then what is the sound of sheep 
goats and cattle I hear. Saul answered, the troops brought them from the Amalekites and spared the best sheep, goats, and cattle in order to offer a sacrifice to the Lord your God, but the rest were destroyed. Stop. I love this part. So what happens is God had told Saul to go wage war on a group of people who have constantly and repeatedly um, done evil to the, the nation of Israel. And God said, go do it. I want you to wipe them out. Go and do this. And, and, and just, just all of the goods, I don't want anything to survive this thing. All the grain, all the cat, I want, I want it all destroyed. I don't want anybody to take away plunder from this battle. When Samuel gets there, here's all the plunder. <laughs> all the plunder, all the things are just, and, and, and Saul tries to spin it. Oh, we, we brought the best back so we could sacrifice to God. I can, see, I can see the wheels turn in Samuel's mind. Okay, there's a statue to Saul here. And hmm, they got all the plunder that they weren't supposed to take. So what does, Saul, what does Samuel say to Saul? Stop. Just stop. Just shut up. You're digging a bigger hole. For, just stop. Stop, exclaimed Samuel. Let me tell you what the Lord said to me last night. Tell me, he replied. Samuel continued, although you once considered yourself uh, unimportant, although you once considered yourself unimportant, you were the guy in the baggage, right? Didn't think you could do it. Have you not become the leader of the tribes of Israel? The Lord anointed you king over Israel and then sent you on a mission and said, go and completely destroy the sinful Amalekites. So why didn't you obey the Lord? Why did you rush on the plunder and do what was evil in the Lord's sight? He goes, but I did obey the Lord, Saul answered. I went on the mission the Lord gave me. I brought back King Agag of Emelec, and I completely destroyed the Amalekites. The troops, oh, the troops, remember the troops? This is called, this is classic passing the buck. The troops took the sheep, the goats, and cattle from the plunder the best of what set apart for destruction to sacrifice to the Lord your God. Oh, I love when we see a shift here. When he was king, when he was anointed king, he was the Lord God. Now he's the Lord your God. He's not saying he's not Lord. He's just not my Lord. Verse 22, then Samuel said, Does the Lord take pleasure in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much in obeying the Lord? Look, to obey is better than sacrifice. This is something we have to grasp in our day and age. There are people all over our country saying, identifying themselves as Christians, they actually go to church sometimes, but their lifestyle is completely other than what Scripture mandates. So they go to church and they sing songs and they worship and they may even be part of a small group and maybe, maybe, possibly they give in the offering. But their lives are so far from the example that Scripture sets for us. Look, to obey is better than worship, than sacrifice. To pay attention is better than the fat of rams. For rebellion is like the sin of divination. And defiance is like wickedness of idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has rejected you as king. Saul answered Samuel, I have sinned. I have transgressed the Lord's command and your words because I was afraid of the people and I obeyed them. Now, therefore, please forgive my sin and turn with me and come to worship the Lord. Samuel replied to him, I will not return with you because you rejected the word of the Lord. The Lord has rejected you from being king over Israel. When Samuel turned to go, Saul grabbed the corner of his robe and it tore. 
Samuel said to him, the Lord has torn the kingdom of Israel away from you today and has given it to your neighbor who is better than you. He's better than you. Now, what does that even mean? What is better about David than Saul? I mean, over this series, we're going to talk about a bunch of failures that David had too. I want to highlight something in Saul's life right here in this moment that you'll see as we talk about, and I'll correct the rest of the series, but as we talk about David's life moving forward. When Saul is confronted with his sin, and the consequences of his sin, he repents. I mean, ever, ever have a, a child in your house? Grandchild, regular child? I love it when children repent because they don't want to get punished. They're not sorry for what they did. They're sorry they got caught. Right? Oh, please don't take my computer away. Please. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Are you really? No, you're just sorry you got nailed. And that's Saul. That's Saul here. His heart is completely unrepentant. He just doesn't want to have to pay the consequences for his actions. And we like to pick on Saul. We like to pick on kids that do that, but we're the same way. We're the same way. A submissive heart is the difference between the two. 